These words are from a car driver reporting to the police after a crash in Lisbon. He was going very well. He's probably right, but this is part of the problem. Why are we killing each other in our roles? Why in tens of seconds we can become killers or be killed in a common road situation? Can this be changed? As a physicist, I would like to invite you for a road trip. With the help of Newton's laws, we'll try to understand the way we move. We'll try to understand the meaning of time, space, velocity, acceleration, forces, and energies that we find in common traffic situations. But before we go into our road, I would like to bring you some statistics statistics of what happened in our road. Portugal, 2010, about 47,000 victims, 800 deaths, twice the audience of this auditorium. Surprisingly, most of the crashes with victims occurred during day. Most of the crashes with victims occur during with under good weather and most of the victims occur also are also from crashes in urban areas where the velocities are supposed to be lower let us see this plot most of the victims are from collisions but for some reason about 16 percent of the victims are from turnovers and the statistics is very similar. Runover during daytime, good weather conditions, and urban crashes. But why does this happen? Why does this happen that our trajectory, drivers and walkers, cross in such a dramatic way? Does this mean that we don't know how to move? Well, let's take the help of Newton. In the 17th century, Newton wrote a book, The Mathematical Principle of Natural Philosophy. In this book, he presents the three basic laws of motion. These laws apply in almost cases in our daily lives for cars, walkers, drivers. The first law of motion states the following. Everybody will remain at rest. Everybody will keep the velocity and move in the straight line unless an external force is applied on it. The second law of Newton relates forces, masses, and acceleration. According to the fourth law of Newton, the acceleration of a body is proportional to the, to the force, to the net force applied on it, and inversely proportional to the mass. The third Newton law applies to collisions. And according to this law, so-called action-reaction, if a body one acts with a force on body two, no way. The body two will answer with an equal uh, force in the opposite direction on body one. How do you find that these laws apply in the situation on the road? Here you see cars going with the constant velocity. Drivers and passengers have no idea or the least idea about the speed they are traveling with when the velocity is constant. You need to look through the windows to check with other cars what are the relative velocities. You have no idea with about your relative velocity to the ground or to a walker standing nearby if you don't have information from buildings, trees, other objects. To understand better the situation, to understand better the meaning of velocities in our lives, let me bring you this example. Imagine a car 
at being there in one second hitting me. Imagine you are a walker, you stay on the edge of a sidewalk and you see such a car coming there in one second hitting me. Do you have any idea the speed of this car? Now you walker standing on the edge of sidewalk, you see another car a car that passes from there to there in one second. Do you walkers and drivers have any idea about the speed of these cars? The first car that was able to hit me in one second because I'm in the middle of this auditorium and it's 10 meters, I check that. He drives at a speed of 36 kilometers per hour. The second at 72. I am confident that the idea that the walker and the driver have about the speed are completely different. In the same way, when you are in the highway, you are a great car and the highway is also great. You complain about the maximum speed that is only 120 kilometers per hour, but it's 33 meters per second. And you have no idea. You think you do. And you think you do have an idea when you are in a plane traveling at 900 kilometers per hour. You miss this information, you have no references. The same way, you, I imagine, you have no idea that right now you are moving at the speed of uh, 1,300 kilometers per hour due to the rotation of the Earth. Plus, you are moving at the speed of 800,000 kilometers per hour right now around the center of the galaxy. You are not afraid. You are not concerned with all that because we are all moving at the same velocity. The most important things are relative velocity. But if now I invite you to go out, I take you in a car and let's go at 500 kilometers per hour just outside, is less than this velocity. I doubt you go in. And why? Because of second law of Newton. You may need to brake. And brake such a car means what? Enormous forces, enormous acceleration. And this is difficult. Let us now look in other situations that we can face if we go in this low speed. Imagine you have a walker, I am a walker, and there is a car coming from there. It's very similar to this one. The distance is about 26 meters. I see the car, the car sees me, and I decide to cross. I feel safe, I decide to cross. Timer is set to zero. I decide to cross and at the same time, the driver realizes that something is going on and he takes the decision to break. But there is the reaction time. The reaction time in this case was one second. But when the driver starts to break, one second later, he's already 40 meters closer to me. And now he needs space to break. We are lucky enough that in this case, the velocity and reaction time combined together so that I escaped, I was able to cross the road without problem. But there is a very important notion here, the reaction time. I told you that the reaction time was one second. This was the time needed to start breaking. But imagine the reaction time was two tenths of a second larger the car would hit the, the walker with a speed about 30 kilometers per hour. And why is this important? Because the reaction time depends on many things. Depends on experience, but depends also on fatigue, depends on the stress, eventually drugs like, like alcohol, but also may depend on the fantastic conversation that you are just having inside your car. And this may affect the walker and may affect the, the end of this story. Let us now see two different cases. One is similar. Another one is a car driving at 50 kilometers per hour. You would say, oh, well, 50 kil kilometers per hour is more or less. Oh, no one, the radars don't pay attention if I drive at 60 kilometers per hour. Why this 10 kilometers can really have a big impact? Let me see. For both drivers, the reaction time I set to one second. 
so one second later, the both drivers were able to start braking. This is the time they need before, between the moment they saw the walker and they were able to start braking. What is the problem? The second car is now closer to the walker and you will have less space to stop. And of course, he's unable to stop. The second car hits the walker with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour because he had very short space to brake. And this is our enormous energy. And if you want to understand or to have a better feeling about energy that you, with which you hit a uh, walker, I give you this example. What are the energies involved? If you are driving in the car at 30 kilometers per hour and you hit a wall, it's the same like falling from the first wall. If you are driving at 60 kilometers per hour, it was the previous case, is jumping from the fourth wall, you won't take the risk. If we go faster at 80 kilometers per hour, which are velocities allowed in some places in Lisbon, and you feel confident, only 80 kilometers per hour is like jumping from the seventh floor. Well, and if you hit a walker, the problem is that you do have airbags, the walker doesn't. And so you would say, okay, they have cross walls. Yes, they do. But the statistics show that about 40% walker, 40 walkers run over last year in Portugal were crossing a cross wall with signposting. Why does this happen? Probably because cross walls are trapped for the walkers. They provide a wrong confidence. When they take the risk, they may not realize that the car driver may be unable to stop. And why? These reasons can be different. Just because, let's say, the driver does not respect at all. Or because the driver was unable to see where was the crosswalk. Or because there were other cars parking and were blocking the view. For all of these reasons, extremely important that in residential areas, closer to school, hospital, and other places where you have good, big concentrations of people, the speed limit must be lowered. But there is another also important issue on these things, is that not only you can find, you can put the signpost, everything, but it's very important that the environment of the road gives the correct information, that the, the road environment forces to reduce the speed. This is the case, for instance, when you have raised crosswalk. If you are about to end our road trip, I would like to mention that it is very important that drivers and walkers have the correct perception, intuitive perception from the road environment, what is the best speed, the best way to move to avoid uh, tragedy. is of course far beyond the aims of my talk today to make a big analysis of the traffic, urban traffic problems in Portugal or the problem of the walkers. But still, I think that during our short trip, we're able to identify already some tasks and some challenges that based on the Newton's laws, and these Newton's laws are universal and apply everywhere, no matter the distance you plan to travel. This challenge must be taken into consideration if you assume that something can be done. And there are challenges for insurance companies and car industry. Training in their avoidance 
should be implemented and supported. Introduction of new technologies in vehicles. This can save lives. This can save lives not only drivers and passengers, as it was before priority, but this can save, can save lives for walkers. At 2011, the fact that we do not have electronic stability control, it should be not the case. Challenges for authorities. Many things can be done, but there is one simple thing that must be imposed and in a short period will have a great impact. This is, of course, the reduction of speed limits in the residential areas. And there's another thing, provide and implement safer road environment is the best way to reduce casualties. Media, you write and you talk much better than I do, so I don't write here anything for you. But there is a warning. And I would like to call your attention for the following. Any time you mention the so-called black spots, any time you mention brands and you provide the names of the brands of the cars that are involved in accidents or crashes, the things change. This is a hint. And there is also a hint for radio stations and radio uh, emissions regarding safety on the road, on the road. Please try to avoid in your radio emissions sounds like crashes, sounds like uh, car horns, sounds like baby crying, and screech of a braking car. All of this sound from radio may be confused as a real traffic situation and may induce errors and tragedies. For walkers and drivers, we share the same space. So keep following the Newton's rules. They apply everywhere. And maintain your awareness at the highest possible level. Be aware. But we are humans. We make errors. I still think that with the help of Newton laws, we can decrease the number of tragedies in our roads, having a better feeling, a better knowledge, a better training on the implication of the Newton's laws. And this can help our understanding of our situation. The better knowledge of Newton's laws can help also to implement error management strategies that you are, with which we are failing in our roads. But it's of course an enormous challenge improving knowledge. And I to time out. But of course, the most important thing is what, and the most difficult, is change behaviors. Thank you very much.